Premanande Haribo Namaom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadhi Paschacha Deshatarine <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narottamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki So we're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, chapter number 11, entitled The Childhood Pastimes of Krishna. Beginning, you know, yesterday he didn't give class, right? So we finished yesterday text 10. So, so I'll read from 11 on. <coughs> Let me... Oh, did we do 11? Okay, so, uh, so number 12. Text 12. Saratiragatam Krishnam Bhagnarjunam Atavayat Ramancha Rohini Devi Kridantam Kridantam Balakar Brisham Saratiragatam Krishnam Bhagnat Junam Atat Vayat Ranam Charohini Devi Kridantam Balakar Prisham Saratiragatam Krishnam Bhaknarjunam atavayat Ranam charohini devi Kridantam balakar prisham Ramancha Rohini Devi Krishantam Balake Krisham Ritiram Kam Krishnam
ಸರಿತೀರಗತಂ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಗ್ನಾರ್ಜುನ ಮತಾಭಾಯತ್ ರಮಂಚಾರೋಹಿಣಿ ದೇವಿ ಕ್ರೀಡಂತ ಬಲಕೃಶ ಸರಿತೀರ to the river side gasham who have got krishnam and to krishna bhagna arjunam after the past time of breaking the yamala arjuna trees ata then avayat called Ramancha as well as Balaram Rohini the mother of Balaram Devi the goddess of fortune Kridantam who were engaged in playing Balakai with many other boys Brisham with deep attention translation once after the uprooting of the yamala arjuna trees rohini devi went to call rama and krishna who had both gone to the river side and were playing with the other boys with deep attention purport mother yashoda was more attached to krishna and balaram than rohini devi was although rohini was the mother of balaram mother yashoda sent rohini devi to call rama and krishna from their play since it was the right time for lunch therefore rohini devi went to call them breaking their engagement in play go read the next text also no peyatam yada hato krida sangena putra kau yashodam preshayam asa rohini putra vatsalam because of being too attached to playing with the other boys krishna and balaram did not return upon being called by rohini therefore rohini sent mother yashoda to call them back because mother yashoda was more affectionate to krishna and balaram purport yashodam preyasham asa these very words show that since krishna and balaram did not care to return in response to the order of rohini rohini thought that if yashoda called they would have to return for yashoda was more affectionate to krishna and balaram 14 gudam tam sa sutam balhe ativelam sahagrajam yashoda jo havit krishnam putras neha snutastani krishna and balarama being attached to their play were playing with the other boys although it was very late therefore mother yashoda called them back for lunch because of her ecstatic love an affection for krishna and balarama milk flowed from her breasts purport the word ajohavit means calling them again and again krishna and balaram she called please come back you are late for your lunch you have played sufficiently come back text 15 
krishna krishna ravindaksha tata ehi stanam piba alam vi harai sud sud shanta krida shanto si putraka translation mother yashoda said my dear son krishna lotus eyed krishna come here and drink the milk of my breast my dear darling you must be very tired because of hunger and the fatigue of playing so long there is no need to play any more text 16 hey rama gacha tat hey he rama gacha tata su sanuja kulanandana prato eva kritara kritararas tad bhavan bhoktam arhati my dear balarama best of our family please come immediately with your younger brother krishna you both ate in the morning and now you ought to eat something more 17 pratikshate tvam dasarha bakshamano prajadvidpa eya vayo priyam dehi swagrihan yatabalaka Nanda Maharaj, the king of Braja, is now waiting to eat. Oh, my dear son Balarama, he is waiting for you. Therefore, come back to please us. All the boys playing with you and Krishna should now go to their homes. Purport. It appears that Nanda Maharaj regularly took his food with his two sons Krishna and Balarama. Yashoda told the other boys, "Now you should go to your homes. Father and son generally sit together." So mother Yashoda requested Krishna and Balarama to return. and she advised the other boys to go home so that their parents would not have to wait for them text 18 duli dusaritangas tvam putra majanam avaha janmaksham tidya bhavati vi Prebyo dehaga suchi. Translation: Mother Yashoda further told Krishna, "My dear son, because of playing all day, your body has become covered with dust and mud. Therefore, come back, take your bath, and cleanse yourself. Today, the moon is conjoined." with the auspicious star of your birth therefore be pure and give cows in charity to the brahmanas purport it is a custom of vedic culture that whenever there are whenever there is any auspicious ceremony one should give valuable cows in charity to the brahmanas Therefore mother Yashoda requested Krishna instead of being enthusiastic in playing now please come and be enthusiastic in charity Yagna dan tapa karma natyajam karyam evatat as advised in Bhagavad Gita Sacrifice, charity, and austerity should never be given up. Yagna dan tapa chayva, pavanani manishini manishinam. Even if one is very much advanced in spiritual life, one should not give up these three duties. 
to observe one's birthday ceremony, one should do something in terms of one of these three items, yagna, dan, or tapa, or all of them together. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanye Nathasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we're hearing about Lord Krishna's childhood pastimes in Vrindavan and we hear how Lord Krishna is so much absorbed in playing with the other cowherd boys. So much so that even when Rohini calls them, he doesn't, they don't pay attention, they keep playing. So of course those cowherd boys are very dear to Lord Krishna. As it says, Krita Punya Punja, they perform pious activities over many lifetimes and therefore they become, they become qualified to be in Lord Krishna's childhood pastimes, to take part in the, his Leela there in Vrindavan. And then we hear Mother Rohini, apparently she is not so much regarded as Yasoda. Yashoda is, she, although Rohini is the mother of Rohini, it's Yashoda who has the greatest love for Krishna and also Balaram. So Rohini requests Yashoda, you go and call, and Yashoda is telling them, come home, take your lunch. Your father's waiting. Nanda Maharaj is there waiting to take lunch together. Very nice culture. The family sit together and take their food together. Oh, it's so rare these days. The modern society, the, how people live in this modern age, they hardly ever sit together to take their meals at home. They build houses now. They build them without a kitchen. How do people eat? They just go out to eat. They eat outside. Kavi Chandraswami told me in Japan, they take three meals a day at 7-Eleven. <laughs> Can you imagine? Three meals a day from the 7-Eleven. You could imagine what they must do to your health. Yeah. Unimaginable. Anyway, this is, the culture is family sit together. The father and the sons and they sit together and they enjoy the meal. The mother cooks. Mother cooks. Mothers are all working today. They're all out of work. Who's cooking? <laughs> first one who comes home cooks. If the husband's home first, he will cook. Or maybe they have a maid if they're wealthy. They have a maid there and somebody, and they have somebody hire somebody to cook. But the culture is so important to sit together, take food together. Very nice, very pleasant. Yeah. I rem remember uh, Tamal Krishna Goswami, when he would, whenever he would come, he would always take meals with, he would invite so many different people to come sit with him and take food together with him. It was a nice culture on his part, uh, like to be with the family, with the other devotees and interact with them. And so Nanda Maharaj, and it's a family, the family situation, family life. We don't have these families anymore. And the family is all broken, all finished in divorce, separated, children brought up separate no parents and all working 
whole culture is lost. But you can see how nice the village life is. Of course, nowadays you go to the village, there's no young people there anymore. Where did all the young people go? They all gone to the factory. They all gone to work in the big factories to make money. It's very difficult to get people just to plant the rice. There's no workers. They've all gone to the factory. They've all gone to the city. They're sitting in the in the multinational corporation at the typewriter in front of the computer. Nobody's there at home to 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 cook or to or to farm the land. So that culture is gone. So Mother Yashoda, she, you can see she's encouraging Krishna to come home. That she tells Krishna that today's a special day. There's a special uh, conjunction. The auspicious planet of, the, of your birth is there. It's a time when you have to come home and give charity to the brahmanas. Oh, giving charity to the brahmanas. Let's give some, what does she say? Uh, give some charity. Maybe they'll give some cows, right? Give some cows in charity to the brahmanas. Oh, if you go out on Sankirtan, somebody go, wants to give you a cow. You, <laughs> what are you going to do, you know? Somebody comes here, I'll give you a donation. How many cows do you want, you know? Are you, are you ready to take some cows in charity? <laughs> That's it's the highest charity, to be given cows. So Prabhupada uh, talks about how these activities, yagna, dan and tapa. It can never be given up. If in 18th chapter Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Yagna, Dan, Tapa are never given up even by, they purify even the great souls. So, Yagna, sacrifice. What's the Yagna we do? Harinam Sankirtan. Yeah, the Yuga Dharma. The Yuga Dharma, Kali Yuga, Harinam Sankirtan. Kirtan, Yuga Dharma, thank your time. So we can do that one very easily. It's important when we have birthdays and festivals and like that. We want, we definitely want to do some Sankirtan. It's very important that everyone can do, and that is also charity, giving the holy name to people, the loud chanting of the holy name, the congregational chanting. So that's the yagna and the dan, the charity. Uh, if you give away money, it's very difficult. You know, people, we don't have so much money in the Kali Yuga. And if you give some money away, you know, just like even you give away food, so many people come. You give money away, the whole planet would come. They come from all over the world to get money if they thought you're giving money away. So... You know, we don't have much money to give money away, but the greatest wealth we can give people, Krishna consciousness. We give them some Krishna consciousness. We give them the holy name. And tapa, the austerity. What austerities can we do? Well, austerity, we say, it's destroyed by intoxication. Where, where people take intoxication, then there's no austerity, there's no tapa. And that intoxication is pride. And so it's important to try to cultivate the humble mood, the humble attitude. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu encourages all of us to be humble. How humble? Lower than the straw in the street. And offer all respects, amanena manadena, offering all respects to others and not being anxious to be respected for ourselves. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a very nice section in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, just before Krishna's coming to, you know, you know that 
passage where they, they deliver the Yagnapatnis, the Brahmana's wives. The, the, the cowherd boys come to the Brahmana's wives to beg food. So before that, that's the chapter where Krishna has been stealing the garments of the gopis. But Krishna speaks in praise of the trees. He glorifies the trees. He said, these trees are the most pious. Just look how pious these trees are. That they give us shade from the hot sun. They shelter us from the rain. And at the same time, they give fruit and flowers. And they give fuel also. So these trees are so pious. They're so magnanimous. They're giving everything for the service of others. Lord Krishna is speaking this because he knows very soon they're going to go to this village where the brahmanas are not going to give anything. The cowherd boys go to ask charity from the brahmanas. They go and say, we're coming in the name of Krishna and Balaram and we're hungry. We didn't have any breakfast. And the brahmanas, they just ignore them. And so, we can understand that if these brahmanas don't care about the welfare of others, then even though they may be born brahmanas, their position is no better than, in fact, they're, they're, they're lower than these trees. Because the trees are very magnanimous, very pious. And there's a nice verse there, Etavaj janma sapoyam Dehinam eha deheshu praner arte diyavacha shreya acharanam sada. It is the duty of all living entities to perform welfare activities for the benefit of others by sacrificing their life, their wealth, their intelligence, and their words. This a very great sacrifice, right? Sacrifice your life. Yeah, people, sac they, sometimes they give their life for others. Just like just now, you know, people in the medical care, the doctors and nurses, some of them have become infected because they're dealing with so many sick people. They've become infected themselves. So they sacrifice their health and they risk their life to try to help others. Not everybody's willing to give their life. One, of the, one devotee I know, who's a doctor, they were, they, they, she was telling me how when they ask people to go to the hospital to treat these people with this uh, virus, so many of the, the doctors said, Oh, no, no, I can't go. I have children. I have young family. I have a home to support. I can't go. I might get the disease. They didn't want to risk. So not everybody is willing to take that kind of risk. So it's very great to give you life. And of course, like Lord Jesus Christ, he died for the sins of others. Or, or that was the, what the, the Christians say anyway. So that principle is there. To sacrifice for others. Your life your wealth, hard-earned money. People, you know, with great endeavor, they work hard to get money. And if they sacrifice it for the service of Krishna, then that's the greatest sacrifice. Just like devotees are contributing so much for, to construct the temple of the Vedic planetarium. So it's a great sacrifice. To work hard to, after many long years of working, they save up money and then they give it for the service of Krishna. So that's a great charity. And intelligence, maybe people have no money, they're not able to give money, so use their intelligence for the service of Krishna. Think how to serve Krishna how to distribute the message of Krishna, how to give Krishna consciousness to others, make some propaganda program 
to infiltrate the minds of the materialistic people, give them a chance to hear about Krishna. That's using intelligence. And then words. People, someone say, I have no money and I'm not intelligent. So, use your words. You can speak. So use your tongue to chant the holy name of Krishna. That's very good also. Chanting the holy name. The loud chanting of the holy name will deliver all living entities. Lord Chaitanya asked Haridas Thakur how to deliver all these lower living entities. And Haridas Thakur told Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the loud chanting of the holy name delivers everyone. And Lord Chaitanya demonstrated that when he went through the forest of Jarakanda, chanting and dancing. The animals, all the ferocious animals came and they began to dance. They began to embrace other creatures in the forest who usually they would devour, but due to the chanting of the holy name, they would embrace them in ecstasy. So even the animals can feel ecstasy of love of God by the grace of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, we're not on that level. We cannot do that. But we should try to do some welfare activity, do some charity, give some charity. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about how charity can be in the modes. There's charity in goodness, in passion, and in ignorance. Devotee told me that when Prime Minister Modi came at one point, he was giving some charity, giving some do contribution for something. I can't remember what it was now. Do you remember? Anyway, he quoted the verse from Bhagavad Gita that charity should be done, uh, it, it's done out of duty and it's done without any expectation of anything in return and it should be given at the proper time and place and to a qualified person. That is charity in the mode of goodness. That's the highest charity. You give to the qualified person is very important. So as devotees we take a great responsibility when people give us contributions, give us some donations, that we have to use everything very properly. Nothing for our own sense gratification, but everything for the service of Krishna and the Krishna consciousness movement. So it's a duty to give charity, but it's a duty not everybody likes to take up. And this kind of charity is usually performed when there's a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse. Just like Lord Krishna came to Kurukshetra when there was an eclipse and he brought all of his family members from Dwarka and at that time Lord Krishna gave charity because so many great sages, they had all come there. So who do we give charity to? Charity is given to the brahmanas. Brahmanas mean those who are so busy with their spiritual duties that they have no time to go and earn money for themselves. So they are dependent on charity. The brahmanas have that facility because they are engaged in so many spiritual activities, studying the scriptures, worshipping the deities. They don't have time to go and work and go into the, or to do business or whatever, to simply to earn money. Rather, the brahmana's interest is to satisfy the Supreme Lord. They work for the pleasure of the Lord. So they are allowed to receive charity. And they are also allowed to give charity. It is said in the Kali Yuga, of course, Brahmanas can perform six activities. Uh, uh, 
Dan Prakid, uh, 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 they can do. They can worship the deity and teach others to worship the deity. They can study the scriptures, teach others the scriptures, and they can accept charity and give charity. So it's remarked that in the Kali Yuga, the Brahmanas are expert in only one of these six things. They're expert in receiving the charity. And the other things they never bother about. So, of course, this is not what we want. We want the, to show the, the real nature of the Brahmana. Just like Sukadeva Goswami, it said he would go to the homes of the householders, but he wouldn't go simply to beg some milk. His real purpose in going to the homes of the householders was to awaken them to Krishna consciousness, to give them some knowledge to enlighten them about the mission of the human life. Because often in householder life, one can become forgetful about the real duty. So, so Sukadeva Goswami would go to their homes to give that, to give the highest thing. And at the same time, to take some milk from them. The pretense was to come there begging, but his real mission is to give knowledge. So similarly, when we approach people, our real purpose in approaching them is to give them enlightenment, to give them knowledge. And of course, we try also to engage them in Krishna's service. If they can contribute for the service of Krishna, then it's very good for them. So giving charity is done in the mode of goodness, out of duty, without any expectation of return. Sometimes in India, they will say, Ek paisa dega, dus lakh malega. Right? I will give one paisa, I will get back ten lakhs. <laughs> so, that's not the highest charity, if we give with that kind of mentality. One wants to give, for a devotee, because devotees often give charity, we, when we give with real devotion, we should understand we're giving Krishna what is his. All the wealth is actually his. It's not mine. It's not mine. I'm not giving anything. It's all his. I'm just giving him what is his. Then that is bhakti yoga. Karma yoga is thinking, I'm giving this. I give this. We work and then we give this. I give this to Krishna. That's karma yoga. But bhakti yoga is to understand all the wealth is Krishna's. We're giving him what is his. So when we give back to Krishna what is his, naturally there's no expectation of getting anything in return. So charity in the mode of goodness is the highest charity, in the mode of passion, then people will give for their own name and fame, or they will give in a grudging manner. Sometimes people put pressure on other people, that, come on, you should give, you've got a lot of money, you should give, and so the person feels ashamed, and he didn't really want to give, but because he's put into that situation, he decides, okay, I'll give something. So he gives, but then afterwards he thinks, oh, I had to give charity, oh, I had to give that donation. So they have regret. So that's charity in the mode of passion. Not, not the best charity. And then charity in the mode of ignorance is to give to an unqualified person and to give them for some foolish, sinful activity. Just like some people want money to take alcohol or to take some kind of intoxication or they want money for their gambling. You know, people come 
Sometimes they will say they're doing a business and they say, I'm going to make a lot of money, I'll pay you back with big interest and they lose all the money. And so we should be very careful about giving charity. Charity in the mode of passion and ignorance are certainly not good. We want to get away from passion and ignorance. Cultivate the mode of goodness. And so the highest charity we said, you chant the holy name. Every one of us can do that. As we purify the heart. We go everywhere and give the loud chanting of the holy name. So at this time where social distancing is there, keeping away from people, still we can broadcast the holy name. The devotees are having kirtan on the internet. Is it 24 hours non-stop? Harinam kirtan. And everyone who goes online can hear the holy name. We can do Harinam on our own. Srila Prabhupada was alone. He went to the park and chanted. And people were watching. People were joining. So... Mother Yashoda is encouraging Krishna that you, you come home, I want you to, do the, to give this charity. You're, not, you're, not, you're so eager to play with your friends, so I want you to bring that same eagerness home and eagerly I want you to give charity to the brahmanas. Because when they give charity to the brahmanas, the brahmanas will give blessings. Hmm? It's the duty of the brahmanas to bless people. And what the best blessing we can give them is that they will always be in Krishna consciousness. Krishner Matir Vastu. May you always remember Krishna. So that's the best blessing we can get. We want that blessing. Not everybody wants that blessing, of course. When Prabhupada wanted, some men had come to him on the train and they were asking for blessings. So Prabhupada asked them, what blessings did they want? And the one man said, oh, I want to get my daughter married. And the other man said, oh, I have a bad back. If you can help me cure my back. But Prabhupada said, well, I'll give you another blessing. I bless you that you can become like these men shaved heads and in saffron cloth you can become renounced from the material life and when the men heard that they cried oh no Swamiji please not that blessing but that is actually the highest blessing right we want to get that kind of blessing Krishna consciousness that's what we really need so, the duty of a devotee is sometimes we accept charity and sometimes we can all, we're also able to give charity. And certainly we, we, we think how we can give for the benefit of others. All of us as devotees, we have to be concerned for the welfare of others. Just like we're offering this prayer every morning, which Jaipataka Maharaj has written praying for the welfare of the world and so, so devotees like that we're, we have to feel compassion for people we have to think that how to help them not that we shouldn't just think well I'm comfortable I'm safe I have a place I'm okay here there's no problem here we have to think about the other people who are in these unfortunate conditions and think how to help them, how we can deliver them, how we can give them some Krishna consciousness. Right? This is the duty of a devotee. That we're unhappy to see the suffering of others. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there's an the example of Dadichi Muni who was approached by Indra. 
Indra wanted a weapon to fight Vritasura. And Lord Vishnu told him, Lord Vishnu told Indra, I'm not going to kill him. You kill him yourself. So Indra thought, well, how, how I can kill him? He's so ferocious, he's so huge, he's so powerful, I can't defeat him. But Lord Vishnu told him, you go to Dadit, you go and get the bones of a great yogi, Dadit, like Dadichi. Ask him for the bones from his body and then you can make a weapon to kill the, this demon Vritasura. So Indra had to go to Dadichi and he had to ask Dadichi, can you give me the bones from your body? Not a very easy charity to give, right? Somebody comes and asks you, Would you can you give me the bones of your body? So Dadichi, you know his place, Dadichi Muni's ashram? It's just beside Naimasharanya. Last year I was able to visit Naimasharanya and just beside Naimasharanya they have this one temple of Dadichi Muni. Must be where he had resided long ago. So in Dadichi, when he was asked for his body, he said to Indra, he said, don't you know the body is the thing we are most attached to? Actually, Dadichi wasn't attached to the body, but he wanted to hear philosophy from Indra. He wanted, to, he wanted Indra to, to preach to him. So he told Indra, the body is what we're most attached to. So then Indra spoke to Dadichi. He said, you know, it's, it's difficult to give charity. I know, sometimes it's very difficult to give charity. But you should also understand it's very difficult to ask for charity also. And some people come, you know, you, you, you give charity. Maybe you don't give them as much as what they wanted, you know. People may come, they want a lot of money, and you give them a little money. You know, you give them according to your means. And so, difficult sometimes to give, you know, sometimes they ask for people want a lot of money. And you don't have a lot of money to give. If you're poor, how you can give charity? But Indra said it's also hard to ask for charity. Sometimes, you know, devotees go on Sankirtan, and they're not so able, they're not, they don't feel so confident to approach people to offer them books. They feel, oh, they just feel embarrassed, uncomfortable. They never asked anybody for money before. And they find it difficult to do. So Indra told like that to Dadichi. Dadichi said, yeah, very nice, very good. So then Dadichi gave up his body. He allowed the different elements to enter into the different uh, elements in the Mahatattva. And in this way, Dadichi left his body and Indra took his bones and made a weapon, his thunderbolt weapon, which he used to kill the demon Vritasura. It's a big charity. Give your whole life. And of course, Vamanadev came to Bali Maharaj to get charity. And Bali Maharaj was trying to encourage Lord Vamanadev, oh, I can give you much more. Why only three steps of land? Why don't take more? And Sukracharya is saying, don't give him charity, don't give charity. But Bali Maharaj thought, well, if, if I give charity and if he is the Supreme Lord, then it's to my credit that I give him. But if I don't give him, he'll take it anyway. And if he takes it by force, then I don't get any credit. I don't get any recognition. So better I give him, better I give. Why let him take it by force? So, so many nice examples are there, giving charity, asking charity. So Lord Krishna, 
he also gave charity. He's going to give cows to the brahmanas for the auspicious day of his birthday. Okay, any comments? Any questions? Please accept my humble obeisances, Gurudev. Thank you very much. Please, how can I understand that charity can purify our hearts from Charu Chitra Devidasi? How can I understand charity can purify our heart? Because in order to give charity, we have to show some detachment. We're giving away something which we possess. Charity means to give what you possess. You own something, you have some wealth, you give it to another. So because we are giving something, that helps us to cultivate detachment. And that detachment purifies the heart, takes away our attachment to the material. It shows, because we are concerned about others, we want to give to others. We're not just thinking of ourself. We, we keep for ourselves that selfishness. But when we give to others, that is selfless. All right? But that shows that we, we care about others. So that caring is very important. That it, Lord Chaitanya was worried about Vasudev Datta. He told Shivananda saying, he said, you take care of his money because whatever he's got, he'll give it away. Vasudev Datta had that habit that he would always give everything he had away to other people. He had nothing for himself. And so uh, Lord Chaitanya was concerned. He didn't want him to give everything away. Thank you for Guru's excellent lecture. Please, I want to ask, during this pandemic of coronavirus, um, those doctors and nurses, they lost their lives because of saving the patients. Where they are going to take birth in their next life? Oh, where will the doctors who sacrificed their life taking care of others go? They'll go to higher planets. They'll get a good birth in the higher planets. And if we as devotees pray for them, can they become devotees in their next life? Yet yeah, by the mercy of a devotee, if we pray for others, then certainly it's very beneficial for others, for their benefit. It can help them to become devotee. It can give them the opportunity at least to come close to being a devotee. And during the preaching, sometimes devotees should also be ready to sacrifice the health or even life. Is that true? But we are also uh, taught that the first thing in our spiritual practice is health, then second is sadhana, then is our family, our job, and the specific seva. How can we understand this? How we balance everything? From Jamuna Priya Devidasi. I have never heard this personally, but it sounds logically that you have to keep the body fit and healthy in order to be able to serve Krishna. Because this body belongs to Krishna. So we have, we have a duty to take care of the body to keep it in good condition so that we can use it for Krishna's service. Obeisances to Maharaj, can you tell us the meaning of our begging after initiation? After initiation, we're begging. Why do the devotees, after taking initiation, why are they supposed to go and beg from others? <laughs> Yes, uh, because when you become, at the time of initiation, everything you have becomes the property of your guru. So you have nothing. 
The guru has every, takes everything from you. So then, it's the duty of the disciple to go and beg. And whatever alms they collect, they give to the guru. They give to, and the, the spiritual teacher will take the alms and he will give it for the service of Krishna. So it's to help us to understand our position as a disciple that our duty is to sacrifice everything for the pleasure of the spiritual master. And that can also mean that we will become very humble and we will go and beg from others. We will go and solicit some contributions from others. So it's uh, helping us to cultivate humility as well as uh, detachment from the material. Prabhupada told the young boys in the Gurukula that he wanted them also to go for Sankirtan and learn how to distribute books and preach to people and also could, they can request some donations because this just that principle of begging takes great humility question from that question is from Sitala Devidasi she likes to thank you and then the last the, the next one is from Pak Tingu Obeisances to Guru Maharaj. I have been distributing prasadam to my friends and colleagues, but after some time I lost my enthusiasm. So, in which kind of mentality we should distribute prasadam to the others? Well, what should be our mentality in distributing prasadam to others? We want people to understand that this food has been offered to Krishna that it's without any karma and that it's very purifying and if they will accept it and honor it that can cleanse their heart it can destroy sinful reactions they should understand that it is not just ordinary food but it has a spiritual potency which can take away the sinful reactions which keep us in the material world Last question from Charu Madhavi Devidasi. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Obeisance is to your lotus feet. One devotee is planning to have a child, but her husband is eating meat. And she saw in the Srimad Bhagavatam, before giving birth to a child, there is a Garbodam Samskar. So how she can do this? Before having a child, they should do Garbodam Samskar. But the husband is eating meat. You should request a husband not to eat meat for some time. You must, the wife must learn to prepare nice food to, to attract the husband, to help the husband to control the tongue. If the wife will prepare nice tasty foodstuffs, then the husband won't need to eat meat. At least at home, he, sh he should not eat meat. It's important that the wife can cook nourishing, tasty food and then she can attract the husband to eat nice Krishna conscious food. Then you can do the Garbhadhan Samskar. Prabhupada taught Garbhadhan Samskar means to chant 50 rounds, right? In this eat. What they're supposed to do is to chant 50 rounds then they can attract a good soul. We get a good soul. You want to attract, we want good children. So you want to attract the good soul, it depends on the consciousness of the couple at the time of the conception. So we have to purify the consciousness through chanting the holy name. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Premanande.